Welcome to this video. This is going to be a short video on the anatomy and physiology of nails. Okay, so let's begin with the anatomy and then we'll talk about the physiology. Okay, so first thing, let me just say that everything we're going to say here will apply equally well for fingernails and toenails. However, all of the pictures that I'm going to draw will be of fingernails rather than toenails. Okay, so as I say, we'll begin with the anatomy. So let's start by drawing the most basic picture, the most obvious picture, which is just going to be a picture of someone's nail, and then we'll, um, we'll label up some parts, okay, and give them their fancy names. Okay, so what I'll start by doing then is just drawing the end of someone's finger, so like so. So this is going to be at the end of someone's finger, and I'll draw it nice and large here. Okay, now let's add on uh, the nail onto this. So let's say this is their fingernail here. Okay, now curve it nicely round like so. Okay, so the first thing to say is that the full and proper name for a nail, the hard portion, so what everyone else would just call a nail, is the nail plate. Okay, so the hard portion uh, that is made up of keratin, as we'll see, uh, that officially is called the nail plate, but of course if you just called that the nail, uh, everyone would know what you meant. Okay, so what portions then do we have of the nail plate? Well, of course, we have the main body of the nail plate here, and then a portion that is segregated out as being separate is this free edge here. Okay, so the portion that overhangs uh, off the uh, end of the finger, this is uh, quite logically called the free edge of the nail. Okay, so this is the free edge of the nail, so I'll just colour in this portion here in green. So this is, of course, the free edge of the nail uh, plate. Um, and then all of this portion that's then visible and is sitting on top of the finger, uh, this is then called the body of the nail plate. Okay, now there's another uh, portion of the nail plate that is um, not visible, which is called the nail root. And the nail root would continue on further, so the nail plate actually continues on further down here, um, underneath this portion of skin here that you can't see. Okay, and this portion of the nail plate is called the nail root. Okay, so this is the body of the nail plate, this is the free edge of the nail plate, and this is called the nail root down here, the portion that isn't visible to you and is covered up by a portion of skin. Okay, now, some other pieces of terminology then relating to the anatomy of nails. You will notice, if you examine one of your own nails, that you cannot actually feel the lateral boundaries of the nail. You can up at the free edge, okay? Uh, at the free edge, of course, you can feel the lateral boundary here, the lateral boundary here, and of course, the distal boundary up here. But down here, you can't actually feel the side of your nail. You can't feel where your nail ends. And that's because the skin has folded upwards to cover that boundary of the nail upwards, uh, uh, well, up rather, uh, so to cover the lateral boundary of the nail up, so you can't actually find uh, the lateral boundary of your nails without sort of digging around and hurting yourself. You can do it for a while up at these top portions, but you can't do it down here. Okay, so those folds of the skin upwards that you have on either side, and I'll just cover these in. So this fold of the skin here, okay, which covers the lateral boundary of the nail, and this fold of the skin upwards here, uh, those have names. Those are known as the lateral, uh, whoops, lateral nail folds. Okay, so those are the lateral nail folds. Finally, what I'd like to point out on this picture um, is the name for this fold of skin that covers up the nail root. So I've said that the nail plate extends down further than you can actually see. There's a portion called the nail root that is covered up by a fold of skin. Okay, so if I uh, show you my nail here on my thumb, uh, the nail plate continues on further down past this boundary of skin here. Okay, this is covering up the final, uh, most proximal portion of the nail plate. Okay, and that fold of skin over the nail root has a name, okay? It is called the proximal nail fold, or there's an even fancier name for it, the eponychium. So I'll give you these. Proximal, uh, proximal uh, nail fold here, okay? Or alternatively, you can call it the eponychium, okay? So epo or, or epi means upon, and then nikium means uh, pertaining to the nail. Okay, so this is sitting upon the nail. 
So the eponychium is the other name for the proximal nail fold here that's covering up the nail root. Okay, so the one final thing that I want to add on to this picture before we go on to a different picture is if I show you one of my nails here, and I hope this is showing up, and it is, I think, showing up nicely, you can see very evidently that there is this semicircle of white at the bottom. Okay, so when you look at your nail here, most of the bit underneath the actual nail, and the nail, by the way, is translucent, so you're seeing through the nail here. Okay, most of the portion underneath Okay, the tissue underneath the nail that you're seeing is this sort of pinky colour. Okay, and I'll give you the name for that in a moment. Uh, and then this portion down here is a whitey sort of colour. And that white semicircle here that I'll just sort of, well actually I'll put it on in an unhashed line, that has a special name. That is known as the lunula, okay, for half moon. Okay, so it's from Latin, um, and means pertaining to the moon, because of course it does look uh, like half of a moon, so the lunula is the name for that white semicircle that you can see at the base of your uh, nail, uh, just before the eponychium begins. Okay, right. Now, I think that's as much as we can do from this picture. What I'd now like to do is cut across and take a cross-section and look from the side rather than looking down from above in this way. So let's imagine cutting through your finger and now splitting it in half and looking at the free, um, well, the cross section that we've exposed and we'll see what other things that we can learn from looking uh, at that picture. So I'll draw this here. Okay, so this will give us better perspective for some of the things that we've seen here. So firstly, I'm going to show you the eponychium now. So here is this fold of skin that goes over the nail root here. And now let me put on the full nail here. So here now is the nail with the nail root, the covered up portion shown on it. Okay, and then this can go round like here. So here's the rest of your finger. Okay, so this is the picture that I've now got cut through here. So just to colour a few things in, let's have the uh, nail plate here coloured in in yellow. So this is the nail plate, and we've got the free edge, sh very short here, but the, you could have it longer if you wish on your picture. Okay, um, then the body of the nail plate, and then the nail root is this portion that's underneath the eponychium, this fold of skin that goes over uh, the nail root here, this most proximal portion of the nail. Okay, right, so what's my new point here? Well, my new point is, what's the name for all of this portion here that sits underneath the nail? And really, it's just a continuation of the epidermis. So, all of this, remember, let me just remind you of the structure of the skin. So, the skin has two main layers. There is the epidermis, which is the outermost layer, okay, and that's the portion that is waterproof. And then there is the dermis underneath, which is uh, the portion um, that uh, has all of the blood vessels in, has all of the nerves in. Uh, that's the sort of supporting bit. Okay, so this is called the epidermis. This is the actual outer protect protection, the waterproof bit, which is just loads of layers of cells that get gradually harder and harder towards the outside. Remember, they become they, they go through huge changes. So at the bottom of the epidermis, and this is important, so actually I'll just go over this in a bit more detail. So the epidermis is a huge uh, number of layers of cells, and at the bottom of the epidermis, the cells are dividing very rapidly, okay? Uh, and they're producing more and more cells that will then gradually rise up. Some of the cells will obviously remain at the bottom to sustain the population of cells there that are dividing, but then others will move upwards, and as they move upwards, they undergo a differentiation process, they change their characteristics hugely, okay, and they undergo a process known as keratinization, okay, and in keratinization what happens is the cell's cytoplasm becomes absolutely full of keratin, okay, keratin is a protein, and if you want to draw keratin, just draw it as uh, fibres as a squiggle. So this is how I would draw keratinization. So you start off with a cell right at the bottom. So we'll start off with our cell right at the bottom that's a normal looking cell. And then as it makes its way upwards, what happens is it transforms into a cell that looks like this. Okay, a flattened cell. And really I should draw it the other way around because this is the way it would actually be on this picture. Okay, uh, it loses its nucleus and its cytoplasm just becomes absolutely full of this 
thing that I will show is a squiggle, which is keratin. Okay, so it makes loads and loads of keratin fibers, which is a protein falls itself up with this keratin so that it's now just a bag of keratin and that's becoming its sole purpose in life just to be a bag of keratin and keratin's a very nice strong protein okay it loses all function as an actual living cell so it loses its nucleus its nucleus uh, is removed uh, destroyed and it just becomes this bag of keratin and this is the process that occurs as it moves from the bottom here of the epidermis to the top and at the top all the cells are dead they're just bags of keratin uh, but they are the outer sheet of protection and then of course what happens is they um, are removed they gradually just come off from the surface and they are replaced by new ones that are being made all the time by the skin okay so this is the keratinization process that's normally occurring in the epidermis really nails are just a more extreme version of this so really what i'd like to show you is that this the epidermis i'm showing here in orange and it just effectively curves round like so and this portion that's underneath the nail this is just equivalent to the epidermis okay and certain portions of this uh, portion of, of well this outer layer of cells that borders the nail is effectively like the epidermis in hyperdrive and is producing the nail. So the nail is effectively very similar to these outer cells of the epidermis, just more extreme really. Okay, so let me give you a bit more terminology before I'll go over that again. Okay, so when we look at a nail, so I'll show you the picture of my nail here. Again, the nail, the actual nail, is translucent, so you are seeing, when you look through your nail, you are seeing the portion, the tissue underneath, the surface underneath, okay? So the pinky portion is known as the nail bed, okay? So all of this is called the nail bed, and it is equivalent to epidermis, although it's very thin epidermis, and to an extent it contributes to the formation of the nails, but nowhere near as much as the portion that we're about to discuss. Okay, so that's called the nail bed, and the reason it appears so pinky, by the way, is that you're seeing all of the capillaries underneath. So remember, the dermis is going to be underneath all of this. So underneath all of this uh, nail bed that we have underneath the nail plate, you will have dermis and the dermis will have capillaries in, uh, so that's the reason it's appearing pinky, because it's quite thin and you're seeing all of the capillaries of the dermis underneath. Then the lunula, the white portion that you can see for your nails here, that's very different. That corresponds to this sort of portion. Okay, so this is obviously the bit that you would actually see, you wouldn't see this portion here because that's covered up by the epinychium, but the lunula would be the visible portion of this um, proximal portion or proximal continuation of the nail bed here, and this is the portion that actually produces the nail. This has a special name, this is called the nail matrix, and really you should just think of it as normal epidermis but in hyperdrive okay so not so normal epidermis uh, so it consists of lots of cells like this that are dividing very very rapidly producing a huge great population of cells continuously making more some of those cells will remain in this tissue called the nail matrix here um, to re retain the population at a certain level, whilst the others will move outwards towards the nail, and as they do, they will undergo the keratinization process, they will become uh, just bags of keratin, lose their nucleus, and that's what the nail is. It's about a hundred layers, okay, so hundreds of layers, I'll say, hundreds of layers uh, of keratinized cells, okay, and these cells have a special name, they are known as nail cells. So, what is happening here is this special portion of the nail bed called the nail matrix, part of it is visible, that's the portion that you can see as the lunula, so when you look at the lunula, you are seeing the visible portion of your nail matrix, most of it is hidden by the epinychium, okay, that's this portion here, okay, uh, and that consists of cells that are dividing very, very rapidly. Some of them are remaining there to maintain their population, and others 
that they produce are then undergoing the differentiation process, the keratinization process, and are transforming in phenotype completely, so that they are now just these squamous, which is the fancy word for flat. Okay, so note that I've shown them going from round to being this flat, uh, sprawled out structure. They go to being these squamous bags of keratin. Okay, and that's how the nails are continuously being formed. And as you produce more and more new nail cells, what happens is the whole nail gets forced forward, okay, like so, and that's why your nails are growing. Okay, so there is the physiology of nail growth, where the nail actually is coming from. It's coming from this special portion of the nail bed, a part of which is visible as the lunula here, known as the nail matrix, which consists of uh, a lot of dividing cells right at the base, just like at the base of the epidermis, you have the dividing cells, and then as you go up the nail matrix, and again, I'll stress, the nail matrix is just not just one layer of cell, at cells. As you go up the nail matrix, they become closer and closer to these nail cells, which are effectively equivalent to the outermost portion of the epidermis. And if you uh, know your histology, you'll know that the outer uh, layer of the epidermis, which is made up of these dead keratinized cells here, is known as the stratum, which just means layer corneum. Okay, so the outer layer of the epidermis, the portion that you can actually feel, okay, um, the bit that actually faces the outer world, that has a fancy name called the stratum corneum. And effectively, the nail is just a really, really thick stratum corneum. Okay, but it's the same principle of how you actually make it. Okay, so I think that's all I wanted to say, so we will end this video here. I hope that that has uh, enlightened you upon uh, a bit of the terminology used to describe the anatomy of nails and a little bit of insight into what's actually happening with regards to the physiology of nail production.